Hey, good morning, Jeff. Looks like you're in the uh, the studio. Coming to you live from Freak Speak Studios here. <laughs> Just got done uh, filming some uh, Ask the Scientist uh, shows, so. Cool, cool. Well, I wanted to uh, go live with you today because I want to talk about a word that's probably tossed around this industry as much as any, and it's a word that's assumed when people go to the big box stores or their favorite supplement shop, or even online especially, and that word is quality. Let's define mm -hmm. what that word actually means because, I, I mean, I, you know, I don't really think about that a lot. Like I'm in the grocery store buying milk or whatever. You kind of assume if it's there, it's got to be good. That right. something had to come behind it. But I know in our industry, that word is really overused. So let's, let's say what our definition of it is, and we'll start from there. Yeah, and you know, it's interesting because, you know, you see a lot of people, um, social media, online, you know, and this has been over the years saying, oh, dietary supplements are unregulated. Well, let yeah. me bust that myth. Dietary supplements are the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary, then pharmaceutical. And people always go, oh, no, pharmaceutical has to do clinical trials. That has nothing to do with the regulations of the manufacturing process. That has to do with the claims that they can make that we can't make. So with that in mind, you know, the government uh, several years ago put out new GMP guidelines, which laid out what needed to be done from a quality standpoint. You know, quality really is about quality. I mean, what, what goes into making the product, number one, but more important, what are you now doing to make sure that what you think you're doing, you did it right? Right. You know, what test and uh, balances on that? Well, and a lot of that comes down to, I know there's multiple labs actually that you have inside that facility. And we, we've seen some videos of other manufacturers and other places that make big claims when it comes to labs. I can't remember how that all shook out, but somehow you realized, I think you said it looked fake or Oh, something. no. I mean, you know, we, I've been doing this for a long time. I have been in a lot of independent laboratories and most of them are relatively small. You know, our quality control lab is relatively small in comparison to the overall, you know, square footage of the facility, but it's big enough to handle all the stuff that we need to do. Um, one of the manufacturer videos, not going to say who it was, had a beautiful vi video about their facility and a nice facility, you know, and then they went to talk about um, quality control and they went, it was a cut into something that you could tell was not there because people were dressed in different colors, the whole color scheme of this laboratory, it was huge. It was like the size of when I first went into HFL, the informed sports laboratory. Um, I mean, huge. <laughs> and then later on in the video, video they, they really dive into, okay, we're gonna take you into our quality control lab and show you our infrared testing. And then they went into the lab and I'm like, okay, that's their lab. The rest of it, that wasn't even their lab. That was just something that they cut and paste it in to make it look good. You know, when we show you pictures of our lab, I'm in it, I'm there. So you know it's not a cut and paste. Right, right. So how about this? Um, it's one thing to say you have a lab, and then it comes down to the equipment that's in that lab for the level of testing that I know we do. Right. And that's not something you just go down to your local Target and buy. I mean, this is specialty equipment that costs more than oh. most people could even dream of making <laughs> income in a lifetime, some of it. Yeah, I mean, and you know, that's, that's really the main question is, you know, does people assume, again, that every brand does all this? Well, first of all, the majority of the brands, probably 99%, 95% have to come to somebody else to make their product. They don't make their product. So most of them are just, you know, marketing companies. They don't care about quality. They only care about getting it for a dollar kind of like the MLM businesses, the multi-level, they all got to have their 100% markup. So when you look at, you know, why do we do what we do? But more importantly, like you said, you know, what is the cost? So there's, there's kind of two costs. Number one, you can buy the equipment, but laboratory equipment is not plug and play. It's not like plugging in your TV, hooking up the cable and you're ready to go. Um, no, you have to build methods. You have to develop methods, you've got to build libraries, there's a whole lot of chemistry that goes on. So not only the expense of the equipment, but you have to have 
qualified chemist, and I'm not talking about, you know, someone who took a year of chemistry in college. That's not a chemist. I'm talking about a chemistry degree, a PhD, um, some very, very skilled and qualified people because it, it's complex stuff, you know, and you look at most of this equipment, you know, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000. I mean, it's not cheap, um, especially for things that the government doesn't require you to do. Yeah, well, I guess the other part of that going along with that would be experience overall, but I couldn't walk into that lab and turn half that stuff on and then know no. what to do with it. I mean, these are super complex tools and the technology's come a long way, but still, I mean, you've got to know what the heck you're even looking for to begin with. Well, and same with me years ago when I, we first started to get into testing. Um, again, this was many, many years ago. You know, people may know that, you know, I was the one that brought the near-infrared testing to our industry. I first thought that it was like a computer. I would buy this equipment, plug it in, and I'm ready to test. And I found out very quickly before I purchased it that there was, it was going to take literally about a year to build the libraries before we could even start using it. So once I started to go through all the certifications, um, I think I, I had about 100 hours of training certifications before I could even run this instrument. And then it took me about six months before I could start using it for some tests. But it did take about a year to really build libraries where we can incorporate it, you know, into our testing. And the same goes with, you know, the heavy metal testing that we do, the quality testing, uh, quantifications of, of things. Uh, you just don't put it in the machine. You have to do a lot of sample prep. You got to do digestions. Um, it's, it's some high end chemistry and it takes time. You know, it takes sometimes a day or two just to prep a sample for the machine uh, to be able to accept it. Because again, if the sample is not prepped properly and you don't have a method that's been built, validated, foolproof, that is going to work 100% of the time, then it's completely worthless. Sure. I mean, that's how good science is done. And the yeah. other thing I know we have actually uh, another uh, doctorate level uh, staff member who actually handles quality control outside of just the material. And I'm talking about making sure our labels are always yeah. FDA compliant. And there's, that is another whole complexity that I, I didn't even want to learn even sort of deep. <laughs> thank God there's someone on staff that can do it. Well, that's exactly it. You know I mean? You, we have quality control, um, which, you know, they're dealing with the day-to-day -day operations, you know, signing off on the lines, uh, doing all the testing, making sure that all the paperwork is in line. Then you have the analysts who are analyzing the products. And then we have the data validators who are validating all of our data. Our data has to be 100% accurate. Then you have the quality assurance department, the QA who is monitoring all of what quality control is doing from labels to, you know, SOPs um, <coughs> to all of our procedures, paperwork, um, approvals of raw materials. So, I mean, it, it, there's a lot that goes in, you know, that's a 25 uh, person department, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's a lot. And again, you know, it's a big expense, not only for staff, but for the hardware, the equipment, and then all the consumables that you have to buy on a regular basis to be able to do all these testings, you know, from test tubes to standards to um, uh, pipettes, you name it. Well, and I know another thing, at least that we do, and I can't speak for other manufacturers, right. I just not sure what we do is that when you order in raw material and it's coming from here, there, and everywhere, 100% of it is being tested before it ever even comes yep. through the back door. We are the only manufacturer that I know, and I have talked to the big boys, to the small boys. <clears throat> I don't know anyone else that test every single drum, every single barrel, they do randomization. Because again, FDA says, if you can st statistically come up with a random right. testing protocol, basically what that means is, you know, if you could test, you know, one out of 20, then statistically, you have a good sampling. So you don't need to test the other 19 drums. Or FDA says if you can qualify a vendor and you then could use their vendor C of A, which most people just use that. Well, let me tell you, that ain't worth the paper it's printed on. It's completely worthless. It, it, 
And again, you know, we found you get in 20 drums, three of them could be bad. You could get in one drum, and if you aren't testing top, middle, and bottom, the stuff on the top could be good. The stuff in the middle and the bottle could be bad. So again, there's a lot of uh, things that we've learned over the years on how to properly make sure that those raw materials are exactly what we need. And if you can qualify every raw material from making sure it's the right component to the purity, making sure the heavy metals are in line, Prop 65, uh, safety, making sure microbially they're safe, then we are at least starting with the right stuff. Could you imagine trying to build a house or a car and not having the right starting material, what you're going to end up with at the end? No, <laughs> well, I'm just thinking actually it's, it's scary and maybe even actually it's sad is that if there's other companies, manufacturers, whatever, not doing this level of testing, the stuff that we reject is yep. probably ending up literally in someone else's formula at another oh. manufacturer. We have had material that we have rejected that didn't meet our specifications. And our specifications are very tight. Let's say that I, I will only accept the minimum of 99% purity. I'll get something in. Uh, this happened just recently where it was 89%. The vendor said, not a problem. You know, we'll give you a credit, but we'll have it picked up. We have someone else that's going to take it. And we literally shipped it. Wow. They shipped it to some other manufacturer who that was okay with them. So that is all, happening. That's sad. Oh, we, we get all the time where, you know, a, a, a cheese company, a protein manufacturer will have a low quality batch and they'll offer it for 70 cents on the dollar. And I've seen it, you know, because it'll come by uh, our department. Hey, are you guys interested in this? And other people will grab it because it's 70 cents on the dollar. They won't do any adjustments, purity adjustments, throw it in the bottle knowing that it doesn't meet label claim, you know, it's close, but not us, man. I mean, you know, we, we go above and beyond. And, you know, there was a doc to doc video that we did a few years ago and we're going to do another one. Um, and at the end, you know, um, my statement was, you know, why do I do all this? Because I like to sleep like a baby at night and I sleep great. I remember years ago, somebody asked Lou Ferrigno, um, the Incredible Hulk, if you don't know who that is. Um, they said, how come you look so young? I mean, how come you aren't like a lot of these other bodybuilders who look 90 when they're, you know, 50? And he said, I don't have any skeletons in the closet. And doing all this testing, we know exactly what is leaving our doc. Now, does that mean we don't make mistakes? Anyone that says they don't make mistakes is lying. Yes, we make mistakes. As long as there's human intervention, we're going to make a mistake. I make a mistake. Quality control's job is to catch those mistakes right. Right. and before they go out the door. If it's something that we can fix, then quality control will come up with um, a way to basically fix that. For instance, let's say we're doing a, a, a you know, a, a Super V&M, you know, our Vita Drive and the vitamin C came out a little bit low. Okay, that could have been a way out issue, um, you know, could have been a blending issue. So quality control will decide, does it need to be blended longer? If everything else is in line, then we need to add a little more vitamin C to bring that up to specs. Um, if it can't be, it's destroyed and it starts over. But that's what quality control is, is to catch it before it goes out the door. So anything that leaves our dock is going to meet label claim, it's going to be safe, it's gonna have no drug contaminations. I mean, all the things we do to assure that anyone could use any of our products and will not have an issue. Right, and I guess to kind of bring this home and why this is so important, number one, I guess we have these protocols because like you said, we're not perfect. If we were, we wouldn't need any of these protocols. Everything right. would just always be 100% spot on <laughs> all the time, but it is now because of the protocols. But the real big thing here is Again, you look at a lot of big brands, flashy labels, all that. You just assume, well, they have to have that level of quality. What I say is, again, if you start seeing some of these in certain areas, big box stores or no name brands on like Amazon or whatever, you don't really know that what's in that bottle matches the label. That's number one. The other thing is, it's all, this is a business of margin. You got to make a profit to be able to pay your bills and make that next batch of product and market it and do the whole deal that we do. So all I'm saying is, that money has to come from somewhere. 
And there yep, have yep. to be areas where, at least if you don't have what we have in place, you've got to cut. You've got to make up that Perfect. somewhere. You do. And, and think about this, too. You know, one of the big buzzwords, again, is made in China. I mean, let's face it. The majority of the stuff made in China is disposable. It's junk. Um, I remember when you bought a toaster, you bought a microwave, you bought a coffee pot. It lasted forever. Now you can plan on throwing it out in six months. Well, what about the products <clears throat> that are made in China? have no regulations. What about the products coming in that are made in Mexico, made in Canada? They don't have, first of all, the level of quality that our government requires, number one. Number two, people over there, and most for most, don't care. You know, that doesn't mean that there isn't some good manufactured in some of those areas. We're talking generality. So again, you're putting something in your body. Do you want it coming out of China? that you have no idea, they've been caught melamine spiking, they've been caught cheated. I mean, there's a reason why stuff is cheap. And like you said, you know, with the introduction of Amazon and the internet, they hide behind something. You don't even know where these people are located. You know, um, you can't call them, you can't, you know, they don't have an address and they never respond to an email. Therefore, why would you buy something? Stick with reputable brands. I was just saying today that, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, you're biased. You know, you think that you guys are the only ones that do a good job. I've never said that. I say that we do a good job. There are other brands, other manufacturers I know that do a good job, but there are also a lot of ones that I know that do a crappy job. I have been in manufacturing places. I see their quality level. I cringe when I go in. Um, how do they fly by? They don't register with the FDA. You know, they're small companies. Again, there's a reason why things are cheap. Uh, EFX Sports and any brands that we put out are premium brands. You know, this quality costs money. It adds dollars to a bottle. Um, and if you're not concerned about the quality of your supplement, then you're wasting your money. I mean, you go buy something from the dollar store, you get what you pay for <laughs> I mean, I don't care what it is. You know, you buy some cheap clothes, you buy a cheap toaster, you buy a cheap microwave, a cheap coffee pot. Come on, folks, you know what I'm talking about. It, it goes out and you go buy another one. Well, I ain't putting nothing in my body that's going to break my body down. No more than you would pull up to a gas station and there's a sign up that says, oh, 89% octane, but we've cut it with water 50% and we're going to give you a discount. No, it's going to tear your car up. You can get a new car, but you can't get a new body. Once you start tearing up your liver, your kidneys, your heart, I'm sorry. Watch what you put in your system. Yeah, yeah. Well, and some of those things you were saying there, we'll, we'll, I want to talk about, but we'll save it for another time. We can yeah. get, we have some time. But, um, yeah, this has been some good stuff, and I, I like I, – I want to make the point. We're not trying to make other people look bad so we look better. I just only know what we do, and yeah. – and most other brands do not make their own product. That's number one, which yep. means they don't truly know at the end of the day. They're, they're literally going out on someone on faith, taking their manufacturer's word for it, that they're getting a good product. I mean, I, and I hope they are. I yep. mean, my goodness. So again, th this was just to enlighten people and help them understand what the word quality means when we yep. say quality, because it's just so overused. And this industry is rife, sadly, with some cheaters who are just looking to make a buck. We've been doing this a long, long, long time. We continue, want to continue doing it a long, long time. So we're just going to stick to our guns, you know, and not build a house on sand. And what I would like to do uh, in some future episodes is actually go into our quality control lab and do some short mini versions of each of the pieces of equipment oh, we have yeah. in there. So again, we can show people what they look like, you know, what it's used for. Is it required by the government? Um, and again, this is on site, you know, this, this is real stuff, you know, um, again, the more we, we can be transparent and show people what we do, you know, you as a consumer, me as a consumer, the more I know about things I buy, and, I, and you know, I'm like you, Brian, I mean, I don't care what, what it is we're buying, I scrutinize it, man. Yeah. I look at where it's manufactured, I look at the reputation. I mean, come on, folks, we all read reviews, 
Most of those are fake. <laughs> you know, you got to look at where this company is made. You know, what can I see? Do they give me C of A's, certificate of analysis? Will they give me a peek into the facility? You know, do they let me know the address? You know, you can go ahead and do a, what do they call that? A, a Google Earth. Put our address yes. in, man. You'll see the real deal. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, it ain't, it ain't fake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, that's 2376 Main Street, Billings, Montana, 59105. There you go. Google Earth it, man. Uh, and if you let me know when you are, I'll go out in the parking lot and I'll wave to you. <laughs> That'd be kind of awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. All right. Well, that's a good place for, uh, to shut this down. Um, we'll go live, like I said, another time and hit some other topics that have to do with good. this. Because I think this is the critical stuff that people have to understand. I mean, you work so hard and stick to diets and then you cheat yourself without even knowing it half the time oh. using junky products. Yep, Exactly. All right, man. Well, I'll let you get out of there. I'll All right. Get back to the lab at some point. So we'll talk uh, right. another time.